Bienvenidos. Welcome. Um, I'm Arlene Torres. I'm the director of the Latino Faculty Initiative for the Chancellor's Office at the City University of New York. And I also have an office here at Centro because I teach as a professor in the Department of Africana, Puerto Rican, and Latino Studies. And I was asked to do the introduction today, and I was literally delighted to do so when I saw what the presentation was going to be about today. But before I introduce our distinguished speakers, I would like to say a little bit about um, the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, Centro. There are a number of events that are taking place. You should have received when you walked in the door, and if you didn't, please take it on your way out, uh, the spring calendar. Um, there was also a list of community education programs that are going to be taking place in the month of January and February. And then finally, some information about a conference that is going to take place in the latter part of February. I do want to speak to some of the things that are on the calendar that I want to alert you to. The community workshops um, have had wide appeal, and so I do want to encourage you to participate in those workshops. Um, they are listed there on the program. Next week, there is going to be a Latino faculty roundtable here at Hunter College where we are going to be discussing the relationship between Puerto Rican studies and the broader context of Latino and Latin American and Caribbean studies. And that is also open to the public and I want to encourage you to attend that dialogue as we think through how do we educate students about these issues. And then finally, there is going to be a conference, Siglo XXI, Forging the Future of Latinos in a Time of Crisis. And there's going to be a series of panels and events uh, beginning on the 23rd and ending on the 25th of February. Details with respect to that program can be found on Centro's website. Uh, now what I would like to do is, um, introduce our distinguished guests. As I said, I am delighted and delighted to present this evening what I would call two grounded intellectuals, cultural historians, interlocutors, and artists whose collective vision is part and parcel of the digital presentation that you will see this evening and that we all trust will culminate in the edited volume, Poetic Visions, Contemporary Latino Words and Images. Miriam Hermais, and she may be in the audience, um, in the Enfoco blog states that the project, and I quote her, explores how creative thinkers experiment with words, imagery, and metaphor via photography and poetry. She goes on to say, and I quote, I had a sense of traveling through time and history with these artists. The poets and photographers were artfully matched, and their dedication and care for this project shined like the sun. The imagery and poems had a dialogue amongst themselves, leading me along the ride evoking a deeply felt social, cultural, and historical connection." End quote. George Malave was born in Puerto Rico and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And he studied at the Germain School of Photography and the Educational Alliance under Dr. Al Freed. And he earned a Bachelor of Arts from Empire State SUNY. He is currently working on a series of books covering his photographic output from the past 45 years of work. And I will have to say, as I reviewed his work and the photographic material found therein, I was astonished at uh, the legacy that he um, brings to us. Jose Angel Figueroa 
was born in Mayagüez, Puerto Rico, poet, actor, playwright, literary editor, and a children's literature specialist. Presently, he is a professor of American, Puerto Rican, and Latin American and Caribbean literature at Boricua College in the Bronx. And again, as I reviewed his dossier and looked at the names of the people that he has collaborated with, I had um, a sense of history coming alive. So this evening, what you will see is that very history, that very engagement of these two gentlemen come alive in dialogue with the guests that are here today. They are going to introduce the other distinguished guests, the poets and the artists among you who have collaborated with them. Thank you for coming. I want to thank you for spending uh, your time with us in this uh, very unique moment in our time uh, to present the premier presentation of Poetic Visions, Contemporary Latino Words and Images. And a slice of this book will be presented tonight called Migratory Dreams, A Puerto Rican Journey. Uh, I would like to uh, begin by acknowledging and thanking all those that are involved in this process because oftentimes we wait to the end and uh, I'd rather do it at the beginning in case. Uh, first I want to thank of course uh, Dr. Aline Torres who was here to represent uh, El Centro and Dr. Edwin uh, Melendez, who's the executive director of El Centro. Um, and I want to thank Edwin. When I spoke to him and showed him this book, he was uh, taken by it and immediately offered us a space to do its premiere. Uh, we certainly would have done the premiere at Boricua College, but we're still working at completing the 250 seat theater at Boricua College, which will be opening in late spring. Uh, but we couldn't wait that long. So we want to thank El Centro and Edwin Melendez for your hospitality. I also want to thank the people that work the hardest, so sometimes the people in the background. And I want to give a special kudos and thank you to Evelyn Collazo. Evelyn, would you come here for a second, please? I know you like to be in the back. Venga acá, venga acá, venga acá, venga acá. <laughs> venga acá, hermana. Uh, Evelyn Collazo is the coordinator of a lot of all the program activities at El Centro. She needs roller skates, <laughs> you know. But she is such a hard-working individual. I want to thank you for making it happen. Uh, I also want to thank Ibrahim Gonzalez of WBAI Radio that's been plugging it on his station. Um, and Miriam Romayas, who's the executive director of Enfoco and the editor of its magazine called Nueva Luz. I would encourage you to Google uh, Enfoco a blog because they did an incredible uh, profile of this book in less than 48 hours. And it's a beauty. Uh, lastly, but not, of course not, I want to thank my partner in crime, George Malave. We have been working on this book without a penny for six years. George Malave. The birth of poetic visions is not about an anthology of, cre of selected works of two or three poems here and two or three poems there. It is not an anthology. I want to make that very clear. This is a tribute to our poets and photographers who's dedicated over 40 to 50 years of their commitment to the arts and capturing the Latino experience from their own perspectives. And this book is a tribute to all the contributors in the book. It is a tribute to them, uh, not an anthology of their works. And uh, so with that said, I want to uh, continue the program with George Malabé. We will try to keep the presentation uh, comments to a minimum and let the work speak for themselves.
And this is a book is dedicated to uh, Phil Dante, Pedro Petri, and uh, Piri Thomas. Racial Integrity by Arturo Alfonso Schomburg. I am here with a sincere desire to awaken the sensibilities, to kindle the dormant fibers in the soul, and to fire racial patriotism. It is in the seasons for us to devote our time to kindling the torches that will inspire us to racial integrity. There have been written many histories of our people in slavery, peace, and war, each one serving a purpose where the spark of learning has awakened the soul to thirst for more and better food. These books have been our landmarks, our rocks of ages. Let us place around them the inspiring love so that the scholars of today be spurned to do things by which we will be remembered and in the coming days be heralded for racial identity, preservation, and unity. migratory dreams. They came with their children, their boxes, their bags, arrived all the time, dragging a memory of the sun, walked down the stairs with the skin salty with salitre, brushed by the wings of a pitifre. They brought their memories of ancestors and loved ones in small photographs hidden in shoe boxes. They traveled with great courage to the unknown, to the Mars of the 40s and the 50s, to the strange land with a different tongue, to the strange land with different seasons. They dreamt constantly, hoping to grasp an air free of broken political promises, hoping to carve a space for their descendants in the promised land, hoping to turn the wheel of fortune into a guiding light on the mapless territory of their daring. And their dreams travel far from the northern stars of Arecibo, Ponce, or Comerillo, migratory birds through the skies, flying seeds taking root somewhere else, a voice whispering softly in the wind in which corner will you place the distant land raw and wet by the rains, the ocean drunken with sun, the hot peppery sand under your childhood feet, a voice relentlessly whispering, how many of your mother's kisses will you carry with you? Which of your father's silences will you remember? A voice softly ravaging the heart. From which of your brothers or sisters will you be torn apart? Which of your abuelita's burials will you attend? They wished Maybe their winged dreams stay behind, anchored deeply in the homeland, yet 
they came and they stayed. They stayed regardless of the gangs watching in the unmarked frontiers of Los Barrios, regardless of La Jara and the ruthless rules of order. The path was rocky, treacherous, with dangers big as tiburones, with obstacles high as many junkies. Yet they stayed and came with their music, food, heroes, and artists who crept through the walls with a warm Caribbean tone. Su presencia filled the air with a new promise of vitality and tolerance. And I, a Boricua, making sense of life in this millennium, followed these migratory dreams anchored deeply in Nueva York. I marveled endlessly. They traveled far. They stay. We are here. We are here. In my barrio by Piri Thomas. Hey, mundo grande. Once upon a barrio time, I made my way through the streets of East Harlem with fancy dance steps guiding my feet through dark ghetto streets. Oh, I was deep inside my mind, visiting all the time a world of wonder through the power of enjoying wonderful daydreaming of a world where ghetto children like me could be what they wish to be instead of being what the mean ones wanted us to be. As a child in the 40s, growing up into the 50s, I loved being inside my mind where I could dream dreams as high as the sky and no one could ever, ever, ever take them away from me. A world where I was what I wanted to be. And that, of course, like any other children, was to be free. But the ghettos were ordained racism, treated with disdain, oh yeah. The ghettos were ordained to be a perpetual oyster. Hey, this was during the 30s and the Great Depression, mucho oppression, poverty line, bread line, soup line, clothing line, simple, plain and simple on the welfare line. Home relief, home relief, home relief. And if ever there was work to be found, blacks and browns, last down, last to be fired, first to be fired once upon a barrio time. As a child, I walked through the streets of Harlem with fancy dance steps guiding my feet through dark ghetto streets. Deep inside my mind, enjoying the worlds of time through the power, a world where ghetto children like me could be whatever they wish to be, that is, free from the mind of all time, once upon a body of time when I was a child, just like this. Punto. Adios. Punto. Adios. In the 1970s, uh, there was a small group of photographers who started recording the, the Latino experience. And Charlie Biasini, uh, Roger Caban, and a few others got together and formed an organization called Enfoco. And they are still recording that experience. I remember my mother telling me that she was shocked when she came here uh, in winter after living in an island 
where it was sunny all the time, you lived on a hill, uh, you were surrounded by oceans. So the experience of many of our uh, ancestors was often unpleasant, especially when it came from such a different culture. And during the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the, the, the city was in turmoil. Um, people were uh, protesting wars, protesting the social conditions. And Franco uh, in the Bronx recorded what was happening in that area. And these are some of these images. By the way, as a footnote, Boricua College, where it stands now in the Bronx, the basement of Boricua College used to be the Fort Apache prison. The basement of Boricua College, which is now in, coming in the second year at 100, East 161st Street and 3rd Avenue or Washington Avenue, was the prison. And right parallel to us, or diagonal to us, was the court system that imprisoned a lot of our grandparents and parents who later became young lords and panthers and community organizers. And we took a place that was abandoned for over 35 years, and now this is an institution of learning with 82.5 women at Boricua College. No More Trumpets of Despair by Biddy Thomas. Too long have our ears heard the wailing cries of agony, of men and, and women and children murdered for no reason at all. It makes no difference what the murderer's name is, bullets, bombs, starvation, disease, human indifference to human need. Too long. The trumpets of despair have thundered. Isn't it about time that we really start to care about the useless slaughter of human beings, their dignity plundered, whose only crime was to live, to grow, to share? Yes, trumpets of despair, soon your note will end, and the good people of the earth, with all their dignity, will force the monsters to blend among themselves into a nova-like explosion. For it was their seed that they planted. It was their code, but by love's ode, it was not ours. A clock of time will tow its seconds, for a total world, freedom beckons will never have to listen when we finally learn to care to the trumpets of total bleak despair. And any of you that saw American Gangster, this is it. That all they have are rocks to throw at high-towered snipers' nests hidden behind rifle fire flames, helicopter rocket launch grenades, falling like a deluge of bullets. And still they come with rocks in hand, raucous crowds of disaffected sneers, slinging stones against disgusted justice, smirking soldiers, shooting, grinning, lascivious laughter, bullets hitting, babies falling, right beside their moms. And still they come with screams and shouts, armed with nothing but a thought as soldiers trained to mow them down, spray with flames civilian populations dressed in self-determination, grumbling like the rubble chips they throw, all of which speaks to the testament of massive anger rising to its feet, marching clamor slogans hurled at crime and massacre where right and joy like peace and liberation push straight through the open thighs of street spilled blood as parents wail with falling tears as stillborn twins cut from wounds spill 
upon a nation's blight as once again state precedes the citizen. Uncle Fabulo, the black clad wanderer, skipped this telephone booth on the way home, blubbering random words and reflex syntax, making poetry from word vomit that looks unpleasant but has the wonderful stench of wisdom entangled with smoke from the best pot in Nueva York. <laughs> On this night, the cats call to the newly blossomed Puerto Rican girls, twisting, primping curls with fingers outstretched, reaching to touch the talent of this condom-throwing, invisible poetry stage claimer. This booth you see had been skipped intentionally for Uncle Pedro, clad in black, had grown tired of small spaces, glass places, and longed instead to move on to electric appliances unplugged from walls, yet working perfectly, as if inspired by his desire to break boundaries like flying at the speed of sound hand in hand with words written for no reason and purposefully al mismo tiempo. He would sleep with face imprinted, square-shaped letters spelling sentences incorporated into Spanglish malarismo, male machismo that was spoke twice, thought once, and thrown away on Tuesday. And when he awoke the next night, a new shipment of bilingual slurs would sit chin high, touching clouds of smoke from a joint, still burning, always burning until tomorrow, when strangers would watch him rise from the floor, touch the door, and walk 22 blocks past the booth he would never write about. This is a poem that, uh, uh, this is an inter interview that Pedro did uh, shortly before he passed about the nature of life and death. If you have an opportunity, it's online, you can read it. It was something in his eyes those eyes that had seen so much and touched with lens focus, the aesthetic soul of many the escaping moment, if only to behold the true brilliance of earthly pigments and splashed floral patterns in Crayola shades, the silver print fade of shadows down la calle de mis recuerdos. Perhaps it was the high-pitched cackle of his smile or some remnant of vaquero charm that taught me the value of the word yet. To never forget me is la nación or the voice of static time, the wisdom of wine, the strategy in laughter, the beauty in thoughts enacted before the mind reacts or perhaps, perhaps it was the other way around. For I've learned through him illustrative poetry. Slideshow stutters of the shudder birthed from calculated twists of the wrist evoking prose and hold his lessons like fleeting delicacies in the calloused fingers of the obrero's hands. Dante was also one of the founders of Infoco. He loved the West and I love the way he captured what time does to the faces of things. Frank and Baya, another member of Infoco, and he photographs light and time and night. We didn't want this book to be another neo rican book. It's been done. We didn't want this to be just about El Barrio or Harlem or Locasea. We want it to be a multi-perspective on imagery and words. And we have Roger, another um, a founding member of uh, Enfoco. And he did a wonderful series of uh, Ordobello in Panama. And he captures his mystery, his magic. And photographers are beginning to explore the inner world now. They're taking the medium and experimenting with it. 
And this series by Sophie Rivera is a wonderful example of what you can do with photography. And I must uh, emphasize that the, the, the nature of this presentation is that you'll see an image, but the, the uh, words themselves are just as important as the image. So when ideally you should be reading this book on your lap and, and bouncing off both. We selected works by photographers that had poetic content, and we chose writings and poems by poets that had visual content. And sure enough, the poetry and the photography started navigating towards each other like in a dream. It, it actually was like the, the book told us what to do. I said, no, no, that doesn't go there. This goes here. And, and after a while, we followed because it was correct. Uh, here we have Marisol Diaz, and she's exploring the nature of the social environment. And Adal Maldonado, he's been working, uh, exploring the, the, the inner mind for many, many years. And the theme of women was uh, reemerged over and over. And so there's a whole section of, on, of relationships of women, talking about women, men talking about women, women talking about women, men talking about women. From the cane fields you drove out serpents with flames of wild dancing. Over mountains you outran incest, shredded with fingernails, gouged it with teeth. Eventually it caught you, mommy sold you at the market, next to the onions and potatoes, where you pressed roses against your skin, alluring malaria to rescue you. Mosquitoes ended their stinging, men did not. Licking the fever deeper into your flesh, fever that pushed you out of windows, into rivers, into walls fever that tempered your soft spots into leather. Impenetrable skin that repelled rain and all thoughts of love. Fever in my blood with every kiss you pushed away, offering instead a little fist of rice and beans. All spills and broken things scrubbed to perfection, the mop, the broom, arrows against insults. You learn to praise other women's children, the ones with straight hair, perfect teeth, the ones no darker than an August peak. You made your way on trains and you always got two seats, one for your shopping bag. Once in a while, you got lost, signs and maps hurting your eyes. You hated the smell of cats and said so to anyone who listened. You called all politicians liars with wives who couldn't cook. <laughs> your hair done every Saturday, thin curls on Monday to get through the week, Laundry for families of the dead, broth for the sick, added lace to church dresses for the glory of God, made Jesus out of dish towels and rocked him to sleep. Every night you jumped off the edge of the world in search of just one little dream. Mornings full of nothing, you slipped into your uniform of faith. Sipping coffee like an heiress, knowing you once drove serpents from the cane fields. No man ever raped you deeper than the English you didn't speak. Your eyes collapsing into dead birds, always in the presence of white folks. If only we could go back. I would give you all the kisses I saved just 
in caves. If only we could rub ourselves in roses simply because they are beautiful. Thank you. It's not just the Latino cultural heritage or just the socio-cultural economic frames from which we write. The African influence in our culture from day one has always been there, but has been long denied. And jazz artists, civil rights artists, whether it's Martin Luther King or Malcolm X and a million more, and the women, and particularly the women that took the leadership in community activism have long been ignored. And these poems reflect the African influence in our work. And we want to pay homage to our culture that way. These are poets from Puerto Rico, one of the greatest poets there, Ednaides Rivera. And we just learned that Ednaides and Nina Nieves and a group of women poets tomorrow are going to Cuba to celebrate the writings of women. Congratulations, women. <laughs> I also want to present that although we sometimes think we're romanticizing our image of women, that it's all nonetheless sexual exploitation. Grandmothers was another thing that came up, up over and over. I think because many of us were, were uh, well, they were our caregivers when our parents went off to work. So there was this unique bond that happened because we, we, uh, we migra uh, migrated with them. And we have more and more women becoming leaders, becoming poets, becoming artists, and enriching us all. And in case we didn't say it, all the photographs of all the contributors have been taken by George Malabé. I, I thought it was important for us to know what the faces are behind the images. We don't get that enough. And also to see ourselves in their faces. I also like the fact that poems can be beautiful to look at as, as, as graphic uh, pieces. So in this case, we have, we have Tato's uh, seven women, Siete Mujeres, and they all sh shape like different women. This woman will not be still. <laughs> or quiet. Or polite. I laugh only when I mean it. And if I laugh too long for your comfort zone, too bad. I despise pink, except on the tongue, nipple, and clitoris. I do not dress to please men. I will not bleach, wax, straighten, shave, or tame in any way unruly hair of any kind. I will speak my mind without fear of dirty looks, disapproval, or incarceration. Callous tans make good companions when banging pots and pans. I am loud enough to be heard in a crowd. Astato. <laughs> Truth was not made for whispering. I refuse words like prieto, cocolo, hincho, jabao, and all the other imperialist words that we call a cultural thing. I do not think it's cute to threaten children with el coco <laughs> or raise them on cuentos of Juan Boba instead of Haguevana. I do not follow fashions, dance steps, or slang. I do not slam, I jam. I whistle with two fingers in my mouth. Once a mute cobbler dropped his hammer, 
reshaped his lips into a crescent moon, a star, a gaping sun, and back again, slowly lathering sound into being my naked body outside his window of perfect shoes in the sizes of all people. That day I howled from the left side of my body as the right side wept. And so I received my baptismal name, Amazonica, the only word he ever said. Thank you. There, there are some events that affect us all, no matter what race, and obviously 9-11 was one of them. And it's better, said, better not to say anything, but just view them in silence. We also wanted to capture that although we're very uh, connected to our communities, that there is always a larger community, and that is the world and the universe we live in in our times. And this is part of the times in our transformation. One of the reasons for this book is that there are a number of uh, Latino artists who are under-recognized. And they're all over the place. And mind you, this is, this is not a book yet. Okay, this is a dummy, a completed dummy, that this is the first public presentation. And now we're looking for a publisher. Yeah, so to make that clear. Another theme is nature. We love nature. And it doesn't matter, again, where you're from. And we speak of it in different terms. Visual, with the word. You'd be happy to know, by the way, that some of our friends brought money thinking it was already published. So we'll take your money and we'll give you the book later. <laughs> I love the, the fact that poet, uh, artists in general can take a, an object, a moon or a cane, and make a new world out of it. And we celebrate our music. And we celebrate family. And we celebrate the new, new generation. Now, this is a picture of my, my beautiful wife, who's right here. And the child is my daughter, who's not here, but her granddaughter's here. My granddaughter's here. <laughs> and generations are, and generations and generations are, are building upon each other. This is the emergence of the new voices, the poets that come after us in Tamarinda and other poets. And they're the ones that are continuing our legacy. And I can tell you, we're in good hands. Yes, that's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a responsibility of each generation to improve the next. This is the first, very first poem that we heard as a tribute to P.D. Thomas. And this is the first time he's read it here. Tato La Viega, Piri. Buenas tardes. Me acompaña Cristina Varner from Bedford Stuyvesant. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay, no cuenten. Pity. It was um, a morning that I w went to pick him up on 105th Street at the, at the priest's house. And when I returned him back to 105th Street at the priest's house. Piri Thomas, suavecito. Vaya, allá, ya, va, su camino. Espíritu, espíritu.
tu voz cheverote grandote su destino poet playwright novelist storyteller filmmaker par excellence from 1928 to 2011 serving us justice he had flow, he had low, he had the owl, and he had the wolf. In palabras. Piritamas, suavecito. Vaya, allá, ya, va, su camino. Espíritu es Espirituos, cheverote, grandote, su camino. Aspirina, aspiring, de espíritu. Piritamos, suavecito, vaya, allá, ya. Va su camino, espíritu, espirituos, cheverote, grandote, su destino. Empirico, to arms, with our own written destino, espíritu. Inspiring and conspiring to make us sabios. Piritamas, suavecito, vaya, allá, ya, va, su camino. Espíritu, espirituos, cheverote. Grandote, su destino. Metampiric, beyond and outside the field of expressions. Reinspirited, andaba como un sacerdote. Reinspiriting la calle down on this mean street. Se abren palabras, spiritual meaning, su pesos. They open the wave like Moses. Piritamas, suavecito, vaya, allá, ya, vas, <laughs> su camino. <laughs> Espíritu, espirituos, cheverote, grandote, su destino. He walked like a cura. The streets open up like our own resources. Image of expressions emerging from tenement fresquecita, maduritas, rain fire through this black negrito. You open up these street possibilities, emerging, we emerge like rioters from the jungle. Piritamas, suavecito, vaya, allá, ya, va, su camino. Espíritu, espirituos, cheverote, grandote, 
su destino a los negritos we shouted como negrito we shouted liberation lingo uniting our movements of 500 years based on the cotton plantation recogiendo cotton frutas like blades it was the same as our parents recogiendo on main Broadway factorias where we cut the cotton like piss work bushels era lo mismo el pasado y el futuro nothing has changed Piritamas, suavecito, vaya, allá, ya, va, su camino. Espíritu, espirituos, cheverote, grandote, su camino. Un negro from the island, Arturo Schomburg, revolutionized research in black studies, you negro from New York, Piri Thomas revolutionized the projections of our screaming thoughts. Piri no era un uncle Tom, no era un tío Toma. He walked and is like the 20th century embodiment workshop, jail, institution, teaching us to take the mind and click it, take the mind and click it, lick it, the parala, empty the mother into the written paper and fill it up with the ink con la sangre de la buena palabra. It was the brainchild of your intimate pensamiento. Gracias, Piri. Thank you for all you gave us. Gracias, mi, mi hermano. Thank you. Masai Juma, Cristina Barna, from Bedford Cyberspace. This is our last piece, and then we'll go into uh, a q and A. I'm quite surprised. We never heard of Puerto Ricans being so early. <laughs> Hold on. Ready? Uh, let's get in now. Okay. This is the last piece of In the Moment of Passing by P.D. Thomas. It's the last piece of the book. And we thought we'd say it as a group rather than as individuals. If in this moment of passing of an eternity, I could have the interfaced essence, the power of looking back at me, I would say it truly as I would for the world. Let me be free. I know that the blood that pounds and pulses its way through my veins does not alter the course towards the star that not only I, but all can aim for. It is a beauty that we all can reach. It is a beauty that we all can teach, given unto each one what do we truly own except that which we truly are. And what we can choose, be it a rainbow, star, 
or the agony of a past of present scars. I am not a poet who makes things unreal. I am a poet who makes one feel the strength that is in our people. Human beings upon the face of this beautiful earth who must know their dignity, their honor, no matter their race, no matter their creed, from the moment of their birth. Born of earth and universe. Punto! Thank you. And these migratory dreams keep flying. I would um, like to share these words that I couldn't say it at the beginning, um, but I'll say them again, even uh, in a different way. Um, we have lost such incredible voices. And sometimes we don't appreciate these voices until they're gone. And many of us know that we have embraced our poets and photographers not because they have many books published, they do not. The poets and photographers are purely known because they have been around for more than 40 years working in our communities as teachers, as community activists, as health professionals, and so on. And we just wanted, to, when Pietri died, it just took an incredible chunk away from all of us. And we lost Phil Dante the same year in 2004. And recently, we've not only lost P.D. Thomas, but we also lost one of our greatest mentors from Puerto Rico, Don Ricardo Alegria, who was not only an anthropologist from Harvard, but was the person to actually excavate the Taino Indians and create these parks in Puerto Rico Santo Domingo, the Caribbean, and Latin America. And Don Ricardo always said to me, because I have seen him every summer, his son was one of my students at Columbia University, and he always said to me, Jose Angel, if God will give me just a little bit more time, I will complete my next book. All I want is for the Lord Almighty to just give me a little bit more time so I can do just one more book. Poetic visions, contemporary Latino words and images, is a book for all of us. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay, poets here, there's a photographer here, your uh, could voices, you interaction. Yes, if you want uh, any questions, concerns, uh, dialogue, any of the poets, George and I spoke a lot, so we like the uh, poets, and we have a lot of the photographers, contributors in the audience. Uh, so if anyone has any questions directed at anyone here, uh, this is the time to please get your input or your impressions of this book. Yes? We are now working on a book proposal. By the way, we were gonna bring the book. The book is 12 by 14. We didn't want a book to be eight and a half by 11 because most people read a book and then put it away. We wanted this book to be a coffee table book that you have before you, so when you have people in your presence, you can share this incredible journey. We're now doing a book proposal because a lot of publishers will not accept unsolicited manuscripts without a book proposal. So we're working on that now, and if any of you there uh, know of any great contacts, uh, let us know. But if it doesn't happen, we will publish this book even if we publish it ourselves. That is gonna happen. Any other questions? You know the old saying, when you dedicate yourself to something that is part of our people and our community, is a very delicate matter. This book began as a labor of love, then a labor of patience, a, 
of endurance, of persistence, and then tolerance. <laughs> but this is the first time the public has seen it. And it's our way of trying to get the word out, looking for a publisher. That's our goal. And once we get the publisher, then we'll, we'll scour the country if you, if you let us. Yeah. Also, uh, for the record, um, all the contributors have given us a lot of faith and trust with their works, because many of you know as artists, you know, it's a very delicate matter when you give your works to other people and they, they hold on to this work for a long time, and all kinds of stuff happens, especially with this electronic age. You know, so we've been working diligently with each and every contributor because their faith in us is undeniable and we want to make sure that we honor their work. So every time we do a presentation like this, and this is really our second time, we get different contributors to be a part of it, not the same people, so that people feel they're being included. It's not just who's popular and who's not. So the people that presented before were not these presenters. And if we do it again, it'll be a different set of contributors because we don't want to stay with the same format all the time. By the way, we also won this book, like someone said, with high school and, and youth. There's a, a, a treasure here of works that young people can use for creative writing in the schools, integrating poetry, photography, theater. All these contributors are professors. They're all professional actors. They're scholars and so on. They're community activists. And uh, so they, you know, because we tend to stereotype poets as being bohemian and so on and fuzzballs. No, these are very dedicated cultural visionaries and historians. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm going to say it the way it is. Thank you for coming. It means a lot to us.